Hello fellow modelers, in this video I am going to build this lovely angle 219 in 1 to 48 scale. The kit made by Tamiya is already 21 years old, however it is still the best kit in this scale so far. And as you can see the parts have nice and sharp details even on today's standards of highly detailed modern plastic kits. I ordered few extra parts for the kit, included masks for clear parts, new resin wheels and photo edge set with tons of small details. In any case, let's start with model assembly. I cut out plastic parts from sprue with sharp side cutters. In the kit is included part made from heavy metal. It works as a counterweight because otherwise it would be a problem to balance the whole model. It's worth it. Now I cut out the metal parts from sprue with sharp blade and on the hard cutting pad. Otherwise you can badly bend or destroy parts. And one more thing, do not forget to clean imperfections with a nail file. Now I glue plastic parts together with a Revel Contacta, which is perfect glue for large plastic pieces. Maybe you are asking why I bought new wheels, so here is the difference between plastic from the kit and new ones from resin. It only requires to remove mold line and gate. I use for gluing metal parts super glue, in this case Loctite Super Attack Gel. It has dense consistency, so application is effortless. Maybe you can see on the plastic part a few circles. They are called pinholes and are formed during removal from the mold. I cover them with a putty because they are undesirable. The landing gear and undercarriage shaft are very simplified in the kit. I will try to modify them a little. First, I create new internal structure from photo edge parts. You can glue metal parts again with a super glue, but for achieving stronger joint it is better to use soldering iron and little bit of tin. Now I modify engine radiator. I remove pins from the mold with a Proxon microelectric drill and small guiding head. And as usual, I have a lot of details from extra parts. I unify cockpit with grey primer, also color will adhere to metal parts better. The easy way how to create artificial shading is to paint the whole cockpit with a dark grey shade and then make highlights with lighter shades. Hopefully, I don't need to paint gauges on instrument panel by hand this time. I just make cover glass with a clear varnish. I have also color detail parts for radio, but I think in the kit is radio very nice, so I paint them with a paintbrush. Another very nice detail is seat belts. I make details more pronounced with a black wash. Now I clean excess wash with an enamel thinner. So that is all for the cockpit. 
Now I glue the fuselage together properly with a glue and fix it with a strong clamps. I let it dry properly for one day. You can see the pronounced bond, so I cover it with a party for plastic. I decided to make rivets on the whole model. The major advantage of the rivets is that it will make the surface more detailed and interesting. Also, it will help you with painting because each rivet lines will work as a guide for shading. The whole process is very time consuming, but I still think that it's worth it. I said that undercarriage shaft is very simplified in the kit, so I add more details from plastic profiles. I found a few images of an original plane at Google, so building models are not only about painting, but I mostly spent a few hours of searching of proper documentation, which is essential for a case like this one. As you can see, the difference is significant. I decided to paint typical German propeller cone with a white spiral. I simply mask white stripe with a thin masking tape. If you do not have this one, you can simply cut the right size from thicker one. I apply a little bit of dust wash to wheels. It will make the tire pattern more pronounced. Now I create new landing lights from the clear plastic sprue. I simply heat plastic with a lighter and then push plastic to metal template. And that is all. Now the funny part, painting. I use Tamiya acrylic colors, which are not actually acrylic, but lacquer. Therefore, the best thinner for this type of colors is lacquer thinner. Maybe you saw my previous video with another Night Jagger, Messerschmitt. I get a few comments from my fans that I did painting wrong. I painted surface with a RLM 76, which is a light grey, and then I sprayed stains with a RLM 75, which is a dark grey. It seems logical to me. However, after research of many German planes with a similar camouflages, I found out that fans have right. Also, it exists photos and article from a reconstruction of original Henkel 219, where is this camouflage thoroughly described. So this time, I want to make it correctly. I paint the whole surface with RLM 75, and then I paint a lot of light grey snakes. I think that I don't want to tell you that stains were much easier. Having an airbrush with very thin nozzle is essential. I recommend 0.2 or 0.15mm. I have a harder on Schneebeck Infinity, but same more can do cheaper airbrush also. I was skeptical about painting with camouflage, but I think that the result looks quite good. I do not want to damage the result, therefore I protect the surface with a clear lacquer varnish. Now it only remains to mask grey areas and paint the black bottom side of the plane. Now I paint highlights with a light brown color. It will make the surface less uniform and dual. And again I cover the result with a clear varnish. Now I can apply decals. You can paint them with an airbrush, but in the kit are decals very thin and nicely printed, so I decided to use them. I cover decals with another layer of a clear varnish after application. It's time for washes. As you can see the pan lines and rivet lines are almost invisible. I prefer to make them more pronounced, because after an application overall look will be more interesting. Tamiya enamel pan liner is good, but I prefer my own mixed wash from oil paints and enamel thinner. I covered the surface with a clear lacquer varnish. Therefore, after a few minutes, I can simply clean excess wash with a dry paper napkin. I mix light brown wash from oil paints on the bottom side. The model is still very clean. I prefer weathering, because it will make from model something special, and also you can play with your creativity. 
you can be easily overwhelmed by tons of different weathering products. However, I use for weathering only two oil paints and enamel thinner. You can easily paint stains, leaks, splashes, rust, shading and more. I almost forget to paint exhaust stains. First I paint stains with an airbrush and then make them less uniform with an oil paint. In the kit is a radio antenna nicely molded but quite thick. Therefore I create new ones from cotton swab and copper wire. Now I paint a lot of small scratches with acrylic colors and then I glue a few small final details. So that is all. I don't like to judge my work, but this time I am satisfied with the result. I think the most significant credit goes to German engineers who created this sexy 2 engine fighter. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel, so you will not miss the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Now the presentation of the finished model.